Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about stoichiometry involving gases. So how do you do stoichiometry calculations when either one of your reactants is a gas or one of your products is a gas or all of your reactants and all of your products happen to be gases? Well, <clears throat> in order to really understand how stoichiometry works with gases, uh, you have to understand a couple of basic things about stoichiometry. So the way that I'm going to do this video is there's going to be some information about stoichiometry that you should already know about before you go any further with uh, this video. Now if you need some help with stoichiometry, so if you don't know anything about stoichiometry or you're a little rusty on it, you just need something to kind of refresh your, your understanding of it, uh, go ahead and click that link up there. That's going to take you to my stoichiometry video. And in that video, I just sort of introduce the topic of stoichiometry. I define the word stoichiometry, and I go through a couple of different types of uh, stoichiometric conversions. So just to review a little bit about uh, how stoichiometry works, typically what you're going to do is you're going to start with the mass of one of your reactants or products, and we'll call that A. And then from there, you can convert that mass of A into moles of A using the molar mass of A, which is obtained from the periodic table. And then once you have the amount of one of your reactants or products in moles, you can actually convert that to the amount in moles of another reactant or product. And it's the coefficients from the, that come from the balanced chemical equation that allow you to carry out this conversion. And then finally, once you have the amount in moles of that other reactant or product, you can use its molar mass uh, to convert that back into a mass. Okay, so it's basically a three-step type of conversion. So you convert from mass to moles, then you convert from moles of one thing to moles of another thing, and then you convert from moles to mass. So this is how it's typically done, but this only really works with solids and liquids because if you think about it, if you have a sample of a solid or a liquid, uh, one of the easiest things to measure is its mass. You just put it on a balance and it tells you the mass. Uh, but for gases, it's not so easy. You can't just put a gas onto a balance and then expect all of those gas particles to just kind of lay there so that you can measure their mass. Gases don't work that way. Those particles are traveling around, they're filling their container, they're uh, they're constantly moving, so you can't really measure the mass very easily. Uh, there are, however, a couple of things that you can measure quite easily uh, when you have a gas, and that is the pressure, the temperature, and the volume. So again, you can measure the volume very easily. Uh, with a thermometer, you can measure the temperature very easily. Um, if you have a barometer and a manometer, you can measure the pressure of that gas very easily. Uh, so if you have those three things, pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas, well, you can figure out the amount of that gas in moles. And it's the ideal gas law that helps you do that. So that's where, that's, this is where uh, PV equals NRT is going to come in once again. Uh, then once you have the moles of one of your gases, you can convert that into moles of another gas in that chemical reaction. And it's going to be using the coefficients from your balanced chemical equation. So just, uh, just like in the example above for solids and liquids, again, you still use a balanced chemical equation to go from moles of one thing to moles of another thing. Uh, and then once you have the moles of that other thing, in this case we're calling it B, uh, you can use the ideal gas law once again uh, to convert to the pressure and or temperature and or, and or volume of that other gas in the chemical reaction. So in the next example, uh, or in the only example that I have for you, we're going to do uh, one of these types of uh, stoichiometric conversions and we're going to start uh, from the mass of one thing and go to um, the volume of another thing. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. So the problem says that ethanol CH3CH2OH is synthesized by the of ethylene and that's C2H4 as shown below. So this is our reaction equation. We have one mole of ethylene reacting with one mole of water to make one mole of uh, of ethanol. And the problem asks us which, uh, what volume of ethylene gas measured at a pressure of 1.00 atmospheres and 273.15 kelvins is required to synthesize 10.0 grams of ethanol. Okay, so we have a mass of ethanol and we're trying to convert that all the way to a volume of ethylene gas. So again, starting with our mass of ethanol, that's 10.0 grams of ethanol. Well, we can convert that into moles simply by using the molar mass 
of ethanol, which happens to be 46.07 grams per mole. And so we've converted successfully to uh, moles of ethanol. Uh, now we can use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation to convert into moles of ethylene. Uh, in this case, it happens to be really easy because the coefficients for, ethyl for uh, ethylene and for ethanol are both one. So just to make sure that our units cancel, it looks like grams of ethanol is going to cancel and uh, moles of ethanol is going to cancel as well. So it's 10 divided by 46.07. Uh, we're going to keep that to three significant figures and we're going to get 0 0.217 moles of ethylene gas. Now that we have moles of ethylene gas, we can use the ideal gas law equation and see if we can't solve for the volume that way, because again the problem is asking what volume of ethylene gas. So remember the ideal gas law, that's PV equals NRT. Uh, we can solve for V by simply dividing both sides of this equation by P. That's going to give us that the volume equals NRT over P, and now we simply have to just plug all of those values in and we will get uh, the volume of ethylene gas that we need. So the amount in moles, we just figured that out, that's 0.217 moles. Uh, we're going to multiply that by R, that's the ideal gas constant, 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles kelvins. And then we multiply uh, also by the temperature, that's 273.15 kelvins. So that was given uh, from the problem in, uh, originally. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the pressure, that's 1.00 atmospheres. And again, that's given uh, from the problem and the information in the problem. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure our units cancel out. Looks like moles are going to cancel. It looks like atmospheres are going to cancel. And it also looks like kelvins are going to cancel, leaving us with uh, the, our final unit's going to be in liters, which makes sense after all because we're trying to find a volume. Uh, so it's going to be this mathematical operation and it looks like we're going to keep it to three significant figures uh, and our final answer is going to be 4.86 liters. So that is the volume of ethylene gas that you need uh, according to this balanced chemical equation up here uh, to, make, to make 10 grams of ethanol assuming you have a temperature of 273.15 kelvins and a pressure of 1.00 atmospheres. Okay, so that was a mouthful. I hope you learned a little bit uh, from this lesson on gas stoichiometry. Again, it's just instead of using molar mass uh, to arrive at moles, you use ideal gas law because it's really not easy to measure the mass of a gas directly. It's much easier to measure the, pre the pressure, temperature, and volume of that gas directly. Okay, so that is it. Have a good one.